possibly the two best offensive lines in the state here tonight, and uh, they could tell the factor in the game. Do you feel they will determine it? Well, they're going to they're gonna have a big factor to do in the game. I think the defenses right now and the game plans that each defensive coordinator comes up with to stop these huge offensive lines and their offense is going to be the key. I know that Manatee is a little more wide open offensively. They like throwing the ball a little bit more than Woodham does, and they like to go to their tight end. And I think the defense of Woodham is going to have to do something to stalemate that tight end. The two teams really have done it with offense this year, but it could be the defenses that determine the game. Could be. Kicking game is also very important, and uh, I know that both of these teams do have outstanding kicking games. All right. It's going to be a great, uh, great one here tonight. We'll be back in 30 seconds to talk to Woodham coach Don Sharp. Attention engineers. Registration for graduate engineering courses is now taking place at the University of West Florida. Here is a sample of the many classes offered this semester by the Florida Engineering Education Delivery System. Through this videotape network, courses to update engineering skills or earn master's degrees can be attained from some of Florida's most prestigious graduate engineering institutions. The registration deadline extended to January 2nd, 1986. Coach Don Sharp, a little loose here before the game. Could that be a little pregame nerves coming out? Oh, yeah. I have to do that a little bit to keep them falling apart at these times. This is really the excitement of football comes together in a state championship game, and I feel it all over, so i got to do something. This is your eighth state championship game. Does it feel any different tonight? No, it's the ninth. And uh, this is the rubber game. <laughs> We're four and four. <laughs> what's, what's the feeling like? How, how are the kids feel going into it? Well, we've told them jokes, and we've... Um, fed them enough hamburgers that they're happy and uh, we've had a good trip we've got all our troops here everybody seemed to have made the game I'm going back in the locker room and let the rest of them play <laughs> put it on autopilot <laughs> do, it, do the best we can good uh, luck to you thank you a lot appreciate it coach Don Sharp of the Woodham Titans we'll be back with the opening kickoff in 60 seconds from now Your new home is only as good as your builder. Building with good sense gives people a name they can trust, and that helps my business grow. I want to be proud of every home I build. Good sense is the only way to go. Building with good sense increases resale value of a new home. That's reason enough to buy. Of all the ways to build a home, good sense is the best, period. A good sense home packed with energy-saving features for lower energy costs and superior comfort. Good sense, the best choice for a new home. Hey, Red, I understand you got a lot of bunk beds around here. Where are the bunk beds? Right back here. Come on. That's right. Let Red Cotton help you solve your space problems with any of his huge selection of bunk beds now on display in his newly remodeled showroom. And while browsing, be sure to take a look at the wide variety of beautiful new living room and bedroom suits priced too low to ignore. For any home furnishing needs, you need to see Red Cotton at Brothers Furniture, 1717 North P Street. Back at Hawkins Stadium at Manatee High School. We're moments away from the opening kickoff. The captains are out at the middle of the field for the Woodham Titans. Caesar Jones and Shannon Adams are the two captains tonight. And for Manatee, the safety, Scott Fulford, number 11. And the big fullback, number 32, is Al Clark as the Hurricanes take the field. Manatee comes into tonight's game with an 11-2 record. The Titans also 11-2 as the Titans now emerge from their locker room. Each team 11-2. For the Titans, they lost their first and third games of the season. They lost that big opener to Escambia. Escambia at the time ranked number two in the nation and number one in the state in 4A. They lost that one 23-21. And they lost two weeks later to a very, very good Milton football team, 28 to 21. Since then, the Titans have rolled off 10 straight wins. They are 11 and 2 on the year. They've won their fifth consecutive district championship, and they're looking for the third straight title, state title, in uh, four years. The Manatee Hurricanes, as we mentioned before, won the state championship in 1983 for Coach Joe Canan. 1984, they are ranked number one all the way through before being upended in the second round of the playoffs by Lakeland. And as many of you remember, the Titans 
went on to beat Lakeland and uh, in the state semifinal and beat Miami Southridge for the state championship last year. As you've seen the Titans now gathering on the near sideline. A bit of an oddity here, Jimmy, Jimmy Stevens. Uh, the press box is on the visitor's side, so we have the uh, Woodham fans right beneath us here and the home fans, the Manatee fans across the way. Right, that'll be good for the uh, Pensacola, Pensacola crowd here tonight, uh, hearing the cheering for the good things that happened for the Woodham Titans. We were talking a bit about the offensive line matchup and the great offensive line Manatee has. They've lost a couple of uh, stalwarts, all-state performers. Richard Starweski, Starweski is playing now at the University of Florida, and uh, he was really the stalwart on that offensive line who graduated last year. But they still have uh, offensive left guard, number 70, in the red for uh, Manatee, Macy Mitchell. He is really a tremendous force at, uh, on the offensive line, and they're solid all the way across. The Titans have won the toss, and they will receive, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. Pass Furniture has done it again. Here we are in Theodore, opening a brand new store just for you. Barking prices down, giving you 50 to 75% off name brand furniture. Like this two-piece living room suit, only $168. And remember, the love seat is free. Plus this western living room suit, all six pieces, only $4.98. Also this early American living room suit, same price, $4.98. And recliners, you bet, starting at $98 to $148. And these prices are good at all locations. And there's the opening kickoff. Elton comes down to Salisbury on the one. Salisbury to the 10. Trying to get outside. He won't do it. He won't get outside the 10. Upended at the nine yard line. And he's upended there by Bobby Cheeves, number 13. So the Titans take over first to 10 on their own nine yard line. Well, field position when you have two running football teams can uh, say a lot about the way things will go. And we'll set the Woodham offense for you when we get a chance. Vince Dickens, the quarterback, has him up. Chris Bromley, the center. Dickens capes, big hole. Dickens out, loses the football, and Hawkins falls on it for the first down at the 21-yard line. Dickens got outside. And that was the thing I believe, Jim, the Titans felt they could do is run outside on the Manatee defense. Right. They have to test the inside uh, with these two big guys at the defensive tackles, and then they're going to try to get on the corner with their speed. they got plenty of speed in that backfield. Lance Sasser is the wide receiver. Sparks, Pickering, Bromley, Faro, George, and Hackett is the tight end. We'll set the backs for you after this play. First to 10 for the Titans at the 21. They give it ahead to Jones, and nothing there as he's met and driven back. Got maybe a yard. Chuck Howard. Chuck Howard, 52, the middle linebacker, is the man who made the stop. Pick up perhaps a yard. We'll call it second and nine. Dickens, the quarterback, Salisbury, Jones, and Jason Hawkins, who's gained 1,300 yards this year, are the running backs. Gain of a yard, second down and nine. Dickens Capes trying to get outside, but big play made by number 66, Chris Betts, the senior defensive end, who laid off the fullback and reached out and got Dickens and pulled him down by one hand. So Dickens is pulled down at the line of scrimmage for no gain. It'll be a third and nine from the 22. Sasser splits wide to the right side. Farron Horns, the senior cornerback, is on him one-on-one. -on -one. We'll tell you about him in a second. Hawkins in motion. The delay to Salisbury. He's hit in the backfield, and he's not going to get out. And the first man to get to him is number 56, Dwayne Cheese. So his brother Bobby Cheese made the big play on the kickoff to get things started. And Dwayne Cheese stalls this drive back on the 20-yard line. Loss of two for Salisbury. And the Titans will have to punt it away. And that means Robert Hackett, who carries a 37-yard average into this game. Line of scrimmage is the 20. Low driving kick is going to be returned by Gaskin from the 45. He is hit and dropped by Bill Bradley in Woodham territory at the 47-yard line. Well, you know, Dan, you talk about field position here, and uh, Manatee definitely has the advantage taking the ball their first offensive play on the Woodham side. 
Manatee defense certainly fired up, and uh, they're trying to, of course, that's not unusual in a game like this early. How long do you think that kind of emotion lasts? Well, it usually lasts about the first series, and once you get those butterflies gone, they settle down, and they play football from that point. Okay, we'll set the Manatee offense for you, but first, first down from the Woodham 47-yard line. That's Derek Mays in motion. They give the ball straight ahead to the fullback, big hole on the left side. And Al Clark is down close to the 40-yard line, so good gain on first down of about seven yards. That huge offensive line from Manatee is uh, starting off testing that smaller defensive front of Woodham. They're small, quicker, but they are, uh, they are aggressive. They're very strong up front. And they ran right behind Macy Mitchell, the left guard, number 70, 254-pounder. Edwards, Mitchell, French, and the Stickler twins, Sean and Eric on the right side. Trey Walker's the tight end. Joe Bennett is the split end. Derek Mays, the flanker, is in motion. And they pitch at the Gaskin. He loses the football, gets it back, breaks a couple tackles, and still gets a yard out of the play. So Gaskin has handled the ball twice, and he's fumbled it twice, and there are the butterflies you're talking about. Gaskin showed real good balance that time. And, uh, after he fumbled the ball, he came up with it. He tried to reverse his field. One Woodham defender hit him and uh, almost went down, but he put his hand down. He had the old balance drill, and he stayed up and got the little second effort yardage right here. There's the play you're talking about right there as, Ga as Gaskin stays on his feet. Didn't pick up the first down. He's about uh, two and a half yards short. Third down and two and a half from the Woodham 39. Fullback, first down, Clark. Clark to the 35, and they ran behind the Stickler brothers. Sean Stickler, the right guard, number 76. 6'2", 219 pounds, and there's the backfield. Carl May, the quarterback. Al Clark and Gaskin, the running backs, and Derek Mays is the flanker. Sean Stickler, 219-pound junior on the, is it the right guard? He's 76, his twin brother, Eric. 254 pounds, so they're twins, but they're not identical. Eric got to the breakfast table first. First down from the 35. Pick up of a couple of yards, and at the bottom of the pile will be John Kazaya, number 86, making the stop on Al Clark. Manatee is uh, shifting their tight end from their strong side, moving him over to the other side, so they get a mismatch, what they feel will be a mismatch over there with uh, number 11, their rover, Michael Daniels having to play him when he's not normally used to playing that position. Number 42 is normally used to playing that position on the strong side. That's Bill Bradley normally likes to line up on the tight end, but as you mentioned, and there, there he goes again, and this time Bradley follows him over. So the Titan defense shifting at the snap of the ball, and the quarterback keeps. And May is inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. The man who had a hand on him was Larry Brewer, number 44, and that's certainly no surprise. He leads the Titans in tackles with 130 tackles on the year. Max Sturdivant, the inside linebacker coach for the Titans, says he's never had a football player make that many tackles in a season. And ironically, he says he's not that good an individual tackler. He just has a nose for the football and is always around it. Another third down play, third and two. Let's see which part of the offensive line they run behind. Strong right. And they go that way. This time the quarterback May keeps again. He's hit short of the first down by Bradley. Eddie Boyd also came over to help out, but he'll be about a half yard shy of a first down, I believe. And now by the mark, they may have to bring in the chains. I guess not. He's about a foot short. Eddie Boyd showed a lot of effort that time coming down the line of scrimmage parallel off his nose guard position and making the play on the quarterback outside the tight end area. So he really showed some mobility that time. Fourth down and less than a yard, and they'll go for it. They send twin wide receivers to the left. That's Mays and Joe Bennett out there, but they're going to run it straight ahead to the fullback, and Bradley hits him in the backfield, but Clark drives forward for the first down, running behind the right guard, Sean Stickler and Troy French the 209 pound center. This is a real concern for the Woodham defense here. They've got to be able to stop that fullback inside on the counter dive if anything else is going to work. Right now the huge offensive line for Manatee is coming off the ball and they are getting movement on that defensive front of Woodham. First down from the Titan 23. And again they shift the tight end over. May keeps. Now pitches to Gaskin. Gaskin knocked down hard, but a good gain on first down to about the 15-yard line. About the 15-yard line. Tony Thompson made the defensive play, but it's a gain of seven and second and three at the 15. 
Here you take a look at it again. You go ahead and analyze this. Okay, all this is is the uh, counter option. They reverse out with the quarterback, fake the ball to the fullback, and then they come on down the line of scrimmage with the option to the tailback with their tight end lead blocking out on the corner. Second down at about three. They give it to Gaskin on the counter. He breaks into the secondary. Touchdown, Manatee! This is that misdirection play in which they uh, start the tailback and the fullback to the weak side. Then they bend the tailback to the strong side with the backside guard and tackle pulling with all the offensive linemen on the front side blocking down. Uh, two years ago when I was at Buholtz, they ran that play to perfection. I think if they'd have run that play more often, they'd probably scored 20 more points than they did. Well, they're off to the 6 to nothing start with 444 to go in the first quarter at drive 47 yards. Very tough defensively when they start running that fullback at you behind those big linemen up front. And you start keying on that fullback and you start uh, you start pursuing to him, then they get the misdirection of the tailback. It's very tough to defend. And now Andy Elton on to attempt the extra point. He's hit 60 out of 63 this year. And make it 61 out of 64 as Manatee takes a 7-0 lead first quarter. Attention PJC and UWF students. You cannot afford to buy your books anywhere except Limix Book Company. Our buyback policy allows you to choose from thousands of used textbooks at a savings of at least 25% and a large selection of new textbooks. Our complete art supply department offers a 10% discount and the first 3,000 customers receive a free pen. Limix Book Company, College Textbook and Art Supply Headquarters, 1014 Underwood Avenue behind WSRE TV. How would you like 200 or 500 extra dollars for the holidays? At Fairfield Motors, home of Miracle Strip Auto, if you purchase any new or used car in stock, we'll give you $200 in cash. With the purchase of a 1985-86 conversion van, we'll give you $500. Make the holiday season special with a new car or van, only at Fairfield Motors, Old Palafox Highway, Pensacola, Florida. On the lot financing is available. Uh, Manatee taking over in good field position at the 47, drove it in for the first score of the night. 4.38 to go, first quarter, Manatee leads at 7-0, and now the Titans from the 30, set it up first and 10. Dickens at quarterback. Dickens keeps trying to get outside, and he gets good yardage on first down out to the 37. Zach Samuel, 51, in on the stop. He's the right defensive end. Cheeves and Potter, the tackles. Potter's a good one. And Betts, the left defensive end. Coochie, Howard, and Clyburn are the linebackers. The secondary after this play. Second down and about four. Salisbury finds some room in the middle and gets to the 40-yard line. He's shy of the first down by a yard. Betts in on the stop, number 66. This Manatee defense does a tremendous job of reading and reacting playing techniques in which they're taught to do. I, two years ago, uh, when we played them in the semifinals, uh, when I was at Gainesville Buholtz, uh, we felt like those guys played best technique of any team we played all year. Third down and less than a yard. Gutenman in motion. They give it to Jones. First down, Caesar Jones picks it up as he gets to the 44-yard line. Number 38, Caesar Jones, comes from that, uh, there's the secondary for Manatee, Farron Horns, he's scored five touchdowns this year, four of them on interception returns, one on a block punt, Taylor and Fulford are the, and Robinson round out this uh, secondary. First down at the 44, Titans trailing 7-0. Other way to Hawkins, and he won't get out of the backfield. Hawkins is hit by Potter. And then the middle linebacker, Chuck Howard, okay. also in on the stop. That's basically the same running play in which Manatee scored their touchdown on. It's just out of a different formation. And uh, Manatee's defense did a heck of a job of reacting to that play and stopping it for no gain.
Titans taking a while getting the play in from the sideline. Loss of a yard in the last play. Second and 11. Titans haven't thrown yet. Dickens keeps and he's going to be wrapped up and dropped in the backfield by Samuel. His second big play on the defense. Zach Samuel, number 51. He's just a sophomore, 6'3", 186 pounds. Okay, what they tried to do here is they're blocking down with the offensive tackle, pulling the guard and trying to log or hook the defensive end there, Samuels. And he comes off that block and makes a great play on the quarterback. Lost back to the 39. It's third down and 15. Dickens back to throw, swings it out here for Salisbury, and he'll be run out of bounds on the Woodham sideline, out of bounds at the 41-yard line by Howard, showing great range from his middle linebacker position. And for the second time tonight, the Titans will have to punt it away. Woodham's going to have to open up, I think, a little more offensively. They're going to have to come with some play-action passes. The defense is really keying in on the running game right now, and uh, defensive backs are all playing within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Maybe they can loosen them up a little bit with a pass. Hackett had a 35-yard punt earlier. This one comes down to Gaskin at the 28. Gaskin's got some uh, room up the middle and is belted down hard at the 40-yard line. So a nice return by Gaskin of 13 yards following the 33-yard punt. Manatee seems to have the momentum going their direction right now. It's going to be hard to get this turned around. Manatee first and 10 on the Manatee 40. The fullback straight ahead, big hole. And Clark is out to the 48 yard line. Shannon Adams in on the stop along with Anthony Thompson. Tackled by Adams and Thompson. Okay, this is a quick fullback trap. As you can see, the left guard pull and trap the right end, John Kasaya. Good trap block. He gets up inside the block and gets seven or eight yards on the carry. And Clark, who rushed for 1,130 yards this year. The Titans coaching staff felt he was the best running back they would face. And we are going to take a 60-second timeout as Manatee takes a timeout. You're watching the state championship game on WEAR3. Pensacola Imports kicks off the 86 season with a Gulf Coast greatest starting lineup. The new 86 Hondas have arrived. The all-new lineup is better than ever. We've got them in stock at mid-season savings. The lineup includes the all-new Accords, Honda Civics, Preludes, and more. Better than ever for 86 at Pensacola Imports. Don't miss the Honda season kickoff going on now at Pensacola Imports, 707 New Warrington Road. A new year of quality from your dealer in excellence. Pensacola Imports, Porsche, Audi, Honda. Fifty-three seconds to go. Manatee is taking a timeout. They face a second down and three yards to go at their own 48-yard line. The Hurricanes lead Woodham seven to nothing. We're in the first quarter. That's Mays in motion. May looking to throw, rolling and finding his man open. It's Mays, and Mays has got the first down at the Titan 25, 20-yard line. And he's all the way to the Titan 21-yard line. You see Mays going in, in motion here across. They end up in twins. They fake the isolation to the tailback. And they get the widest receiver running the, the go route, and then the inside receiver ran the out route and found the opening out there in the zone coverage. So the inside receiver just kind of drew the coverage deep off him, and he tucked in underneath it. 
And it worked to the 21-yard line. First down for Manatee. And so far, the Titan defense hasn't slowed Manatee at all. There's that trap. Clark to the four. That's their bread and butter play in this offense. It's a, it's a fullback trap off that, and then they'll run the option to the tailback off on it. It's first and goal for the Canes. The Hurricanes have the ball first and goal. They say his knee touched down at the five-yard line. But Manatee, which drove 47 yards for its first touchdown, has come from its own 40-yard line to the Titan five with 26 seconds to go, trying to take a two-touchdown lead. Here's the fullback, touchdown Clark. All that was is a counter dive play to the fullback with base blocking in the front offensive line. They're just coming off and really doing a job with that big, huge offensive line of Manatees. So it's not a matter of fooling anybody. It's a matter of physically beating people. Very physical up front. These two, both teams do a tremendous job in the weight program in the offseason, and it's showing right here what Manatee is doing. Elton attempting the extra point. And it's good. So, with 20 seconds to go in the first quarter, Manatee leads Woodham 14 to nothing. Save on everything for the do-it-yourselfer during the holiday sale at National Auto Superstores. Look in the mail for our holiday savings circular. Look in the paper for tremendous values. Look to National Auto Superstores for the lowest prices on the Gulf Coast. Navaline oil, just 79 cents a quart. STP oil filters as low as 99 cents after rebate. Motorcraft batteries, only $24.97 after rebate. Incredible savings, the highest quality. Fast service, low prices, and helpful advice. Everything for the do-it-yourselfer at National Auto Superstores, plus holiday savings this week at the National Auto Superstore near you. If you have active people on your Christmas gift list, Old Sarge's is your one-stop Christmas shop. Old Sarge's, the area's largest outdoor outfitter, carries a complete line of camouflage gear. And just in time for Christmas, Old Sarge's featuring all ladies' and men's western boots marked 15 to 50% off. Backpacks, red wing safety boots, flight jackets, wool pants, active clothes that make perfect gifts for active people. At Old Sarge's, 1102 North 9th Avenue, Pensacola. Salisbury up the middle, Sh uh, Sherman Salisbury gets out across the 30-yard line. And he's brought down by Larry Taylor. And now the Titans, a critical offensive sequence right here. The Titans have been able to pick up maybe one first down in their first two possessions. Now they have to move the football from the 32-yard line. Manatee dominating play on both sides of the ball so far. Now Salisbury comes to the sideline and Gutman is in the game and he lines up on the right wing. Reed Snyder's the quarterback and he sends Hawkins in motion and flags are down. And I believe the Titans may have taken too long getting the play off. I beg your pardon, that was a fine. They didn't take the play off. They didn't get the play off. Time ran out. So. That is the end of the first quarter, and it's been a big quarter for Manatee. They lead the Woodham Titans 14 to nothing. Fate Auto Parts began over 30 years ago with one location in 1951 and now has locations throughout Northwest Florida. Fate offers the largest selection of parts, tools, and supplies in Northwest Florida, backed up by a reputation for quality parts and services with consistently low prices every day. Fate is more than just an auto parts store. Fate features a complete automotive machine shop and a professionally staffed automotive paint store. Take advantage of Fate's more than 30 years of experience. Fade, the auto parts store of Northwest Florida. We're back for the start of the second quarter. Woodham Titans with the ball first and 10 from their own 33-yard line. They give the ball, check that, Reed Snyder keeps, and Reed Snyder is stacked up and dropped at the 37-yard line. Baron Horns, 21, coming up from the 
defensive back's position to help on the stop, along with Zach Samuel. And we've called Samuel's name a lot of times, number 51, that sophomore defensive end, really showing a lot of range. He's having a heck of a game so far in the first quarter. He came all the way from the backside defensive end to make that play. All the way from across the field. A gain on the play of about three yards. It'll be a second down, and that's a long six. That's Tate, Ron Tate in the game now at fullback, and Tate picks up the first down out to the 44, maybe the 45-yard line. So the Titans picking up some yardage off the left side. Okay, you see a little offensive surge there by the Woodham offensive line. They came off that time down low and got good movement on the Manatee defensive left side. They mark it at the 45, a first down for the Titans. They need this offensive drive trailing 14 to nothing. Caesar Jones picks up three yards along the right side. He was tripped up at the line of scrimmage by Chris Betts and then fell forward for a couple of yards. And I think this is just a matter of time for Woodham's offense to get on track. They uh, have various uh, blocking schemes up front and they're beginning to get the feel of how this defensive line is playing for Manatee and they're starting probably to come with different blocking schemes. It uh, looks like uh, Mike O'Leary, Mike Thorson, and Max Sturdivant, defensive coaches, figuring out what's going wrong. Second down and seven, and Jones gets the call again, and this time it Cole closes in a hurry. He gets to midfield, and that's about a gain of a yard or so. They mark it at the 49, third down and four coming up. And the Titans are going to take a timeout to talk about it. Third and four, trailing 14 to nothing. Woodham wants to talk about what play call they're going to come up with. Tanger's tax time sale is going on now. Our giant inventory turns to poison after January 1st. Tanger's sleep store is a bargain hunter's paradise with Sealy Posturepedic mattresses and sleep sofas all on sale. We also have extra discounts on all bed suits. The tax time sale means big savings on quality Sealy merchandise. So get to Tanger's now for these incredible tax time sale prices. Tanger's is open Monday through Saturday, 9.30 a.m. until 9 p.m. Tanger's Sleep Store, Davis Highway, two blocks south of University Mall. If you need windows, who do you call? Well, you know what I say, but listen to what some of our customers have written to say. From Scenic Heights, I've been very well pleased with the windows. I attribute a substantial drop in my utility bill to their installation. And from Gulf Breeze, what a pleasure it was working with your company. The quality of installation and helpful attitude of all your people speak well for your company. So if you need windows, call the folks you can trust. Focus on Fokers, Pensacola, Fort Walton, and Mobile. Third down and four for the Titans from the Manatee 49 yard line. Dickens gives it straight ahead to the fullback and he gets the first down. Big blocking along that right side of the offensive line, Jim. That was a big, big play right there to pick up this first down. If uh, Woodham can take the ball down and score right here, they're still in the ball game. There's plenty, plenty of time left in this. I know uh, the last game of the season uh, at Tate, we had a 14 to nothing lead, and it really didn't didn't mean anything to this Woodham offense. You're familiar to 14 nothing leads on these guys. Remember, the Titans did come back. They were down 14 to nothing to Tate, and they were down 14 to nothing to Escambia, first game of the year, and they did fight back. So this is a team that can play from behind. Not your typical wishbone type team. First down from the 44. Reese Snyder's at quarterback. And pick up of a couple of yards on the play. Caesar Jones had the got the call. And lifting off the field, Greg George. And he'll be replaced by Bob Pickering, 71, at the left guard. They also have Buck Paulcheck in there in left tackle. So that Woodham offensive line, which has been banged up. And we'll have to check and see what's wrong with George. It could be an ankle, could be a knee. He's hurt them both. Second down and about eight. Reed Snyder back to throw. Sasser intercepted. Horns on the interception. Remember, he's run four of these back for touchdowns this year. Out of bounds at the 44.
Horns is their best defensive back. He's made some tremendously big plays during the season, scoring the four touchdowns on interception returns. And I think that if I was going to open the game up a little bit, throwing the football, I'd attack someone else other than him. Well, he just took the ball away from Sasser. Sasser had position on him, and Horns forced his way in and made a great play. And the interception return brings it back to the 44-yard line. First half of the 44. Now if we'll see what Messrs. O'Leary, Thorson, and Sturdivant were drawing on the chalkboard will help. Mike O'Daniel making the stop on Clark, but not before Clark rambles to the 35, 36-yard line. Second down at two. That was that fullback trap again. I know that the tackle on the side in which they're trapping to makes a call to the guard on the back side when he's pulling as to which guy he's going to trap, the defensive tackle or the defensive end. Mays in motion. And they give it again to Clark. He's got the first down. Eddie Boyd hit him at about the line of scrimmage. To Clark pull to about the 32-yard line. But it's the first and 10 for the hurricane. In the pregame show, Dan, you were talking about the offensive lines and their physical dominance, and I think Manatee is really showing that, uh, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage right now. 8.05 to go, second quarter. Manatee leading 14 to nothing and threatening once again. First and 10 at the Woodham 32. Trey Walker, the tight end, lines up on the right side. And they run that way. Gaskin runs out of the tackle. Gaskin! Gaskin to the 10 yard line. Gaskins has tremendous quickness in there at that tailback position. The offensive line gets you so much, but he got so much of this on his own. Watch these two cuts he makes back here. One right there on that defensive back, comes upfield, puts another move on, makes another defensive back miss him, and then somebody comes from the back side here to make the play. Manatee has it first down on the 10 yard line. I'm not sure if it's first to 10 or first and goal. It's right close to the stripe. Clark hurdles the line and gets to the five yard line. Same thing, counter dive to the fullback. They just keep coming at you with the fullback on the trap play and the counter dive. Ball resting just inside the five yard line. I think you can count on seeing that misdirection play to the tailback somewhere down here again. Fullback, Clark, touchdown! Guess when you're having that success with your fullback going straight ahead, you don't need misdirection plays. 6.55 to go, second quarter. Manatee leads 20 to nothing, and Elton will attempt to tack on the extra point. Manatee drove 44 yards. The extra point's good. Manatee driving 44 yards for the touchdown following the Karen Horns interception. And there you see it once again, all three touchdowns, they've gone in standing up. That was a trap play that time to the fullback. They blocked down with the tight end on the linebacker, blocked the tackle with the tackle, and then pulled their guard and trapped the defensive end. All right, we'll take a break right now. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching the state championship game on WEAR. Christmas is the time for giving, and if you're someone who gives a lot, Six Star Factory Outlet Store should be on your list. Nothing over $6. At Six Star, your gift-giving dollar goes farther, and there's something for everyone on your list. Register now for BMX bikes to be given away December 24th. Rugged, durable bikes any child will love. Six Star Factory Outlet Store, open till 11 p.m. for your shopping convenience. Six Star, Mariner Mall, Pensacola, where your gift-giving dollar goes farther. Manatee has had the ball three times. They've scored three times, and Salisbury takes the kickoff at the 11th. 
Jones, and he's run down at the 24-yard line. Gets to the 25, so the Titans will put it in play, first and 10 from the 25. Jim, we said last time the Titans had the ball, it was a critical possession. They were trailing by two touchdowns. Now they're down by three. They've never been this far behind before. Well, I wouldn't want to be in the type of offense that Woodham runs in this situation. When you're behind by 21, you're going to have to come out throwing the football. I uh, don't think it's a surprise that we see Bill Reese Snyder in the game right now. And Reese Snyder is still in the football game. The pass that was picked off was not a bad throw. He had it on the money. It's just that Horns out-muscled Sasser for the ball. And Reese Snyder is met and dropped. I think they're playing some games with their outside defensive ends and their outside linebackers, which makes it very tough for the uh, Woodham offensive line to, to follow through with their blocks. Anthony Cucci, 34, is the man who made that stop. And, of course, what you give away with Reese Snyder in is he doesn't run the option nearly as well as does Vince Dickens. But they have the... Okay, now they send Hawkins in motion. And Salisbury cuts it back up the middle, and Salisbury is going to be within about a yard of a first down. Number 20, Sherman Salisbury. Here's another look at it. Nice hole up the middle, but it really does close in a hurry. They, uh, the defensive players stay active. Third down and a short yard. They have to get just across the 35. Hawkins, first down. Hawkins out to the 39-yard line. Woodham, there's five minutes and 30 seconds to go in the half here. Woodham must get a score before the half to at least get a little bit of momentum going into the locker room at halftime so they can come back in the third quarter. First down from the 39. Alonzo Anderson checks into the game, and he's just wide out on the left side. He's now flanked outside Hackett. And Dickens is back at quarterback. He gives it straight ahead to Jones. And Jones rambles to the 43-yard line. And for the first time, the Titans break one up the middle. And they have, well, that's their deepest penetration, the Manatee 43-yard line. After about 15 yards, Five minutes to go. The Titans now in business at the Manatee. 43. Straight ahead to the fullback, Ron Tate. I see one thing, Dan, that uh, Woodham is doing. They're, they're jumping their tight end over to the split end side to make the strong safety number 11 move over to his side, and then they're trying to attack the back side of that, get him out of the run support. Now they're trying to pick on the cornerback over there. On the run. <clears throat> and that's how they never got to the cornerback because Jason Potter, an all-star defensive tackle, made a good defensive play. But as you mentioned, the tight end moves over to the left side. Now they run that way, and they give it to Tate once again, and he gets inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line. So he'll pick up about four yards on the play, but it still sets up a third down and uh, about five yards to go. So the Titans, and I figure they're in four-down territory right now, trailing 21 to nothing. He'll take two pops of picking up the yardage. The pitch to Salisbury, flag is down, and Samuel wraps up Salisbury short of the first down. The flag went down at the line of scrimmage. There's Mike Thorson. You think he's intense? That is not Don Sharp, of course. That is uh, Mike Thorson, the outside linebacker coach. Illegal motion. Illegal motion against the Titans. So instead of, well, now they have a decision. It's either going to be fourth and two or a third down at about 10. Jim, in this situation, the way that defense is playing, what would you figure they'd do? Well, they're going to take it. The five-yard penalty. I think the Manatee defense wants to back them up and give them the long yardage situation, third down and eight or nine, third down and 10 situation here because they are a running team, and it gives them two downs to get 10. The uh, odds on that are not very good. Well, the Titans take their second timeout of the first half, and they trail 21 to nothing. They have an awful lot to talk about. With 3.44 to go, second quarter, Manatee leads 21 to nothing. We'll be back. 
In my career, I've had to clean up a lot of accident scenes. Believe you me, this is a bad one. This guy's lucky, though, he's gonna live. He's gonna have a lot of difficulties, however. You know, it's just really odd. You know, you can be driving down the road and everything in your life just going fine. All of a sudden, bam, your life has changed forever. I just hope he can pay his bills. No one likes the idea of actually suing someone, but if you have received a serious injury, you do have the right to be reimbursed by monetary damages. Therefore, for a free consultation and no obligation, call Terrence A. Gross, attorney at law. Be a part of the winning team at Cliff Fields Motors, Northwest Florida's oldest and largest Nissan dealer. Like the Woodham Titans football team, Nissan cars and trucks are tough, rugged, and built to last. Come see the Nissan 4x4, sports truck, and king cab, or the sporty Pulsar Maxima and Economy Stanza, and you'll see why Nissan quality just can't be beat. Test drive a Nissan from Cliff Fields Motors today and see why more and more people trust the winning team at Cliff Fields Motors, Mobile Highway at W Street. There you see number 66, Greg George, with the ice pack on his... Yeah, it looks like it's on his left knee there. Greg George has been battling injuries all year. Ankle, shoulder, knee injuries. He had a bit of a pinched nerve in the neck, and now he's on the sideline trying to root his team on. Titans face a third and 10 from the 43 of Manatee. Dickens keeps and now pitches, loose football. Manatee recover. That's going to be a very, very costly turnover right there. We knew going into the game that with both of these offenses as explosive and powerful as they are in the kicking games that they play, that the turnovers were going to be the big story of the game. And so far, Manatee leads in that category two to none. What a second turnover. And of course, last time Manatee had the football was via the turnover, and they took that one 44 yards for a touchdown. They drove 44 yards this time. They have to start from their own 48. First and ten, three and a half minutes to go. And this time they stack the running play up at the line of scrimmage. And I tell you, when the teams have been running on you like Manatee's been running on Woodham, and you finally get a running back stood up at the line of scrimmage, you'll find some defensive players want to take a shot. Well, Woodham uh, came out in the 6-1 defense that time. They covered down both guards and tackles and left the, uh, the linebacker over the center. So it's going to be tough for them to pull the guards now and run the traps that they've been running. So maybe this 6-1 defense will be an important change for Woodham. And there you see it again, six men right on the line of scrimmage. Second down and nine, and this time May rolls to his right. He's got his tight end wide open is Walker to the 20. Walker inside the 20 to the 13-yard line. Well, that's that waggle pass that we talked about off the uh, misdirection play to the tailback. They faked that to the tailback, held the linebackers, and then they brought the tight end in behind them. A week ago, the Titans shut out Kirk Kirkpatrick. He didn't catch a ball all night. The great tight end from Brandon and Walker with the running game set to play up. Rambles inside the 15, and Manatee has it first and 10 at the 12. Manatee trying to put a nail in the coffin here, and we've got 2.26 to go in the first half. It's already 21 to nothing. Fullback Clark hurtling at the line of scrimmage gets to about the 10-yard line. Bill Bradley, 42, was in on the stop. Boyd and Bradley made the defensive play. Eddie Boyd also in there. Second down and eight at the 10-yard line. Well, if the Woodham defense is going to strike a blow, this is when they're going to have to do it. I think it'd be a tremendous uplifting for the whole Woodham team right now if the defense could stop these guys for less than six at least. Second down, quarterback keeps, now pitches to Gaskin. He's got lots of room. Touchdown! Steve Gaskin scores his second touchdown of the night. Clark also has two, and the route is on. It's 27 to nothing, with 1.45 to go in the half. Delton on to tack on the extra point. And it's good. So Manatee takes a 28 to nothing lead. We'll be back. Well, here's the replay. If you'll notice, the wide receiver on the left-hand side does an excellent job of getting downfield and blocking the defensive back here, which allowed 
Gaskins to get into the end zone right there. Now it's Abrams who got there too late. And the wide receiver was Derek Mays. Dan, this looks like a little deja vu here. 28 to nothing at halftime is uh, two years ago, Manatee in the semifinals against Gainesville Buholtz, where I was coaching at that time, was the score, and uh, they did not score the second half. We came back and scored two touchdowns. They did not score the second half. Well, you know, throughout the playoffs, after the Tate game, when uh, the Aggies moved the ball so effectively on Woodham and the Titan defense really came together for the playoffs, they had only given up one touchdown before the fourth quarter of any one game. And that is certainly not the story tonight. 28 to nothing with 1.45 to go in the half. Listen to those Manatee fans. I think they smell the blood. Well, they've been waiting for this game for a long time. This kick comes down to Salisbury. He loses it, gets it back, and goes down at the 16-yard line. Salisbury is stopped by Bobby Chief. Titans could have used a big return there in order to use this minute 41 to try to get something on the board, but now you have to wonder back on the 15-yard line if you're just not going to lick your, go back to the locker room and lick your wounds. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Sharp does here. Reese Snyder's in the game. He is their passing quarterback. Uh, with a minute and 40, if you have a passing offense, it's plenty of time to come back and score here. But with their running type of an offense, I'm not sure if they're going to just try to run the clock out and go in only 28 down. They have two wide receivers. Salisbury's to the right. Reese Snyder's back to throw. He's looking for Salisbury down the sideline. Horns is on him. Incomplete. And Salisbury made the nice defensive play to keep the ball away from the Horns, who's already picked off one tonight. Well, that answers that. I think it's Coach Sharp has got to come out throwing the ball right here. They've got to try to get on the board and get something started here before the halftime. Well, they had their deep threat, Salisbury, on the great defensive back, Horns, and Horns came out a winner right there. And Manatee now take a timeout. That's their second timeout, and they may want to see if they can uh, take advantage of what's time, what time is left in case the Titans can't move the ball. All righty. We do want to remind you this championship football game is sponsored by the Florida High School Activities Association, the FHSAA, organized April 9, 1920, by a group of high school principals who saw the necessity for adequate supervision of the rapidly expanding interscholastic athletic program. 29 schools became charter members. It's presently composed of 564 public and non-public junior and senior high schools. The association assures that the policy standards and regulations democratically developed by competent school leaders are designed to provide maximum benefits consistent with sound educational practice for every student and every member school. The Florida High School Activities Association annually sponsors a tournament series to determine a state champion in football, basketball, baseball, cross country, track swimming, soccer, golf, tennis, wrestling, decathlon, heptathlon, softball, volleyball, and weightlifting. And that was not a paid political announcement. Second down and 10 from the 15-yard line. 121 to go. Manatee has one timeout remaining. Reese Snyder keeps, now pitches it to Hawkins. Hawkins to the 35 and to the 40-yard line. One of the few times the Titans have gotten a running back out in the open field. They did. Uh, Jason Hawkins got in the open field out here this time, picked up good yardage, but I think he should have stayed a little closer to the sideline here, got out of bounds to stop the clock. 113 to move. go. So the clock just started after they moved the chains. So they really didn't lose that much time, but the Titans now have some room to work at the 40-yard line. They send Bill Gutenman in motion. They might throw to him, and they do. Check that. That's Sasser. And Sasser finds the sideline. Boy, there's a basketball point guard for you. The man's thinking. He got immediately to the sideline, and he did it just after picking up the first down. 56 seconds to go. And the Titans trying to get something on the board. Secondary is going to be playing a little bit looser right now. Prevent the long play, the big play before the half with one minute to go. Woodham's going to have to hit some of those shorter sideline passes. First down from midfield. Hawkins in motion. And Reese Niner's back to throw. And the ball's batted down at the line of scrimmage. He was looking for Salisbury. Horns was on him. That uh, looks like one of the more intriguing matchups of the night. Salisbury, when he's lined up on wide receiver on Horns. Incomplete pass stops the clock with 54 seconds to go. 89, Sasser goes to the left. Salisbury out here to the right.
They fake the draw, and Reed Snyder wrapped up. He loses the football. Good, got it back. Looked like the ball popped loose, maybe not. If it did, he got it back. And there you see that man Samuel again. Manatee was in a man-to-man -man defense that time and sent their linebackers, put hard pressure. Third down at 16, and Reed Snyder just throws it out of bounds to stop the clock. And I'm really not, we have 28 seconds to go. I'm not exactly sure why. Now they have fourth down at 15, and they're gonna have to punt it away. Well, he may, have, he may have miscounted how many downs have gone. That's a tough thing to keep up with when you're a quarterback out there on the field and you're in your two-minute offense trying to move the ball down the field, using your sidelines to stop the clock. And too many times I've seen the quarterback actually throw it out of bounds on fourth down. Well, fourth down, they're going to go for it. It's desperation time, 28 to nothing, and Dickens keeps wrapped up. Breaks a tackle, but he's not going to get anywhere near the first down. Manatee will take over with 22 seconds to go, and they have the ball at midfield. And as explosive as they've been, they may tack another one on, and they're getting a big hand across the way. Hurricanes would like nothing better than to tack another one on right here. And if you're thinking field goal, Andy Elton holds the season scoring record in Florida. And they throw to Mays out here on Tony Thompson. And Mays run out of bounds and hit late. Oh, and that no. late hit is going to cost him. Bill Bradley hit was, Mays clearly out of bounds. And it's gonna there was cost three him. seconds to go in the half. And he comes up with a 15-yard penalty there on illegal uh, contact out of bounds. And I'll tell you, that's going to put him in field goal range now. That's just obviously a move of frustration, Bradley hitting the man, but that will move the ball to the 23-yard line, so instead of a 55-yard field goal, you're talking a 40-yard field goal, and he's right in range. Elton scored 98 points last year for Manatee, and that is a season-scoring record in the state. In fact, he's got 87 points coming into tonight's game, so he's got 91. And he's going to line this one up on the left hash mark just outside the 30-yard line. So it'll be a 40-yard field goal attempt. Carl May is the holder. The snapper is Troy Edwards. The breeze is in his face, but shouldn't be too much of a factor. Blocked! Adams trying to pick it up and run with it. Nobody has yet. You better fall on it. And finally, Willie Blankenship falls on the ball inside the 10-yard line, and the first half has expired. It's been a great first half for Manatee. Woodham has a lot of regrouping to do. Let's... As the teams leave the field, I believe you see, I believe that was 31 Tony Thompson, who blocked the field goal and prevented any further damage. All right, the Woodham Titan marching band moving on the field. We'll take a break and come back with halftime in just a minute. Now you can enjoy drive-up banking around the clock. I'm Buzz Ritchie, president of Southern Home Savings Bank, introducing you to Southern Access, our new 24-hour automatic banker. Southern Access is fast, simple to use, and allows you to withdraw cash or make deposits from the safety of your car. It's always open and a part of the Honor Network with thousands of locations in Florida. The convenience of 24-hour drive-up banking is available now at Southern Home. Apply at any one of our locations for your Southern Access card today. Let's go. I'm driving. Don't drive. 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 Last time, give me the keys. No way! What kind of friend are you? Look, give him the keys. <laughs> We're back for the second half, and Jim Steven just called the onside kick, and I would be not at all surprised. It's coming towards the sideline, and the Woodham Titans have recovered, and Bo Abrams at the 44-yard line 
they had to do something. And that was really kind of a funny little huddle around the football. And oh, oh, uh, Abrams was over here, the old lonesome end. I think what they did there is they, um, they had Abrams out here on the sideline. Everybody else is right with the kicker, right in the middle, bunched up. And they don't even see Abrams on the sideline over there. They kick it over. And he comes right up the sidelines to make the recovery. Great play to start the second half. So the Titans following the onside kick, first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Caesar Jones dives across the middle, and he gets to the 42. So it's a pickup of three yards on first down. Coochie, number 34, linebacker, was in on the stop. Pick up on a play of about three, second down and seven. Jones breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and is finally drilled at the 38-yard line. Coochie again in on the stop along with Zach Samuel, again ranging from his defensive end position. See Jones hit at the line of scrimmage and good second effort. Dan, if you'll notice, all defensive backs for the Manatee Hurricanes are within four to five yards of the line of scrimmage. They're, Woodham has got to come out throwing a little bit just to loosen that secondary up and get him off the running game. And the deepest man is a safety, and he's six yards back. Everyone else is within three or four yards. Dickens capes. Dickens, big hole. 20, 10. Run down at the one-yard line. Okay, this is the outside veer. The quarterback comes down the line, reads the defensive end, pulls it out from the fullback, and he takes it himself, turns it up the field, breaks to the outside, and gets it up to the one-yard line. Then he covers up the football. I looked for a second like he wasn't going to get it in his outside hand, but then he covered up with both hands, and now the Titans will try to pound it in from the one-and-a-half-yard line. They've had some trouble moving up the middle at times. Jones, touchdown! Dan, this is exactly what Woodham needed to do. I tell you, Coach Sharp came up with a heck of a play there with that onside kick. To open up the second half, recovered that, and now they've got the score. 10-23 to go, third quarter. It's now 28-6, to and Eric Fritz, will he or will he not? Uh, apparently, the Titans are thinking of going for two, and they may have to waste a timeout here. Now they've got the offensive team on there, so they're going to go ahead and go for two. Trailing 28 to 6, just underway, third quarter. <laughs> Hurdling at the line, he's in. Jason Hawkins really got up and over the top of that offensive line that time to get into the end zone. It's just a straight power play, full T backfield. We'll be back. You're watching the state championship game on WEAR. As a special Christmas bonus, now through December 23rd, Astro Lincoln Mercury will give away a 19-inch color TV with the purchase of any new car in stock. I'm Warren Culbertson. I personally invite you to come by and save hundreds, even thousands of dollars on any of our beautiful new Lincolns and Mercurys. And we'll give you this color TV as a special Christmas bonus or take a test drive, and you could win this 25-inch color console. All of this and the best of holiday wishes from all of us at Astro Lincoln Mercury, Pensacola. I'm Dionne Warwick, and this is the new look of Solid Gold. The music you can always count on kicks off with my special co-host and friend, Johnny Mack. Also on stage, Tears for Fears, a classic performance from Grammy winner Tina Turner, plus actor, singer, and world-class star, Sting. Join us this week for the new Solid Gold. On WEAR3. All right, the Woodham Titans coming out. They had to do something drastic, and so often you see those desperation moves backfire, but this time it has paid off, at least for the time being, 28 to 8. The offense has done his, its job. And now for the Titans, you have to look. Here's a little short kick. And will bounce 
out of bounds, and uh, they'll come back and kick that one again. And Jim, a couple of times in the playoffs, most notably, I believe, it was against Lake Mary when uh, Washington recovered one of those onside kicks, which is uh, you just try to drop it in there around the 20-yard line and see if you can sprint under it. And if the uh, receiving team does not field the ball, there's a chance that ball may stay in bounds and you may recover it, and that's what they are looking for there. Right, they're trying to get the ball up in the air as high as they possibly can, get it to come down around the 20-yard line across the other hash, which gives their coverage team enough time to get down underneath it. If they don't have somebody to either fair catch the ball or have somebody catch it and try to get the return, then they've got a possible chance of an onside recovery there. And if not, then uh, the guy does catch it, and they're going to nail him right there for no gain. And in this case, they didn't lose anything. There you see the Manatee offense. Edwards, Mitchell, French, and the two Sticklers. The offensive line been the factor so far, and now the Titan defense has to see if they can stop Manatee. Quarterback capes and gets back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Larry Brewer, 44, in on the stop. Offensive backs, May is the quarterback, Clark and Gaskin, the two running backs, and Derek May is, is the flanker. Second down and nine. Quarterback still has it. May across the middle and pass is incomplete, intended for the tight end. Walker making the effort. That was the same play that they ran in the first half when the tight end was wide open across the middle. They faked the uh, misdirection play to the tailback, and then he comes back to the tight end across the middle. And the free safety there, Shannon Adams, come up with a great play. Made a nice play. They, uh, you really had him well covered, and the ball had to be right on the money. And in order to keep it away from Adams, he had to throw it out of his tight end's reach as well. So now the Titans, big defensive play. Perhaps the biggest defensive down for the Titans in the football game. Once, uh, once it got out of hand in the first half, they need the football back. Walker lines up on the left side. May still has it. He's looking deep. He's got Mays wide open and overthrows him. Mays and out running Willie Blankenship. But he overthrew him. And so for the first time tonight, well, check that, they did force the field goal. But really for the first time tonight, the Titans have forced the Manatee Hurricanes to punt it away. This is a super big defensive uh, effort here by the Woodham, Woodham defense to get the ball back for the offense after the onside kick. And if they can get on the board again, we are going to have one heck of a ball game here. 9.35 to go, third quarter. And uh, Walker's probably the greatest talent that's wasted the most as a punter. He's a preseason All-American. And they say the ball was partially blocked, so no flags go down. Got off a great punt with a man in his face. It goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Manatee fans are screaming for the penalty, but they're not going to get it. I cannot understand how that Woodham defensive lineman coming in here misses this thing. He may have overrun it. He oh, did. He overran the thing. 37-yard punt under duress at best. And the Titans take over first to 10 at the Woodham 39. Can definitely feel Big Mo changing sides now. Well, the offense has to really do it right here if they're going to get back in the football game. Dickens keeps. And he gets out across the 40 to about the 42, maybe the 43. Anthony Cucci turned him in, and again, Zach Samuel, pursuing from the far side of the field, made the stop. Pick up on the play of about uh, three and a half yards, second down and a long six. Dickens keeps, turns it up and gets to the 45-yard line before Howard is there to meet him, along with Dwayne Sheaves, number 56. Dickens gets about three yards. It's going to be a third and four. Chuck Howard does a great job of uh, shuffling down the line of scrimmage from his middle linebacker position here. And, of course, any 4-3 defense has got to have a great middle linebacker. And anytime he can get outside and make the play on the quarterback for a two-yard gain, he's doing a heck of a job. 
Hackett lines up on the left side. Third down and four. Fullback straight ahead. He's short of the first down at about the 48. Jones takes the handoff. Jones on the carry. And he's going to be within a yard of the first down stick, and they may go ahead and bring the chains on to measure. I believe he's short. Coach Sharp, I think, has signaled in that they're going to go for it regardless. They may bring the chains in just to see how far they have to go. 8.01 to go in the third quarter. There you see the backfield. Dick and Salisbury, Jones, and Hawkins. Haven't mentioned the officials tonight. Uh, most of them are out of Fort Myers. Joe Ryder is the referee, and we're going to go to a break. Hurricanes lead 28 to 8. You're watching the state championship game on WEAR3. I don't know what I'm going to do. My sleigh is broken. How will I get these toys to the children? No problem, Santa. Call American International Rent a Car. American International Rent a Car? Yeah, you can rent a baby. Or a car. There's plenty of room for all the toys. That's a great idea. How do I get in touch with them? Easy. They've got four locations. In Pensacola, Mobile, Fort Walton Beach, and Athens. I'll call them right away, and the children will have a Merry Christmas after all. Yay! Enjoy special holiday rates at our newest location. Fourth and one, the Titans go for it. From their own 48. Jones, first down, he's in the secondary. players and coaches on the sideline are getting excited now. And well, so how many times have you seen that? Caesar probably runs a 40-yard dash in five flats, so he's not going to run out and run down anybody. Darren Robinson, the safety, runs him down, but everyone bunched up on the line of scrimmage. He did a tremendous job of breaking a couple arm tackles there at the line of scrimmage. A defensive end came in, tried to tackle him with those arms, and he cannot do that with a running back the size of Caesar Jones. And the Titans take time out with the ball on the nine-yard line. They're knocking on the door once again. We're going to take a break. You're watching the state championship game on WEAR. Save on everything for the do-it-yourselfer during the holiday sale at National Auto Superstores. Savings throughout the store. Look in the paper for tremendous values. Look to National Auto Superstores for the lowest prices on the Gulf Coast. Valvoline Oil, just 79 cents a quart. AC Delco has savings on plugs, oil filters, batteries, and more. The savings are incredible. The quality is the highest. Fast service, low prices, and helpful advice. You'll find it all at National Auto Superstores. You'll find everything for the do-it-yourselfer plus holiday savings this week at the National Auto Superstore near you. Cheerleaders have something to cheer about, as you can see right there. The Titans have the ball first and goal from the nine-yard line. Manatee leads 28 to 8, 7.34 to go in the third quarter. So there is time. That's Gutenman in motion. Dickens runs that way, gives it to Ron Tate, and that offensive line driving forward, and Tate gets inside to five to about the four-yard line, and running behind the right side of the line, and more often than not, that means Vince Sparks has something to do with it. This is beginning to look more like the Woodham offensive line that I expected to see in this game versus a Manatee defense. And there is that Manatee defense. Great job. Zach Samuel, 51, has played a great game at defensive end, and Farron Orange at, at cornerback. Second and goal from the four. Tate. Again, we see that tremendous surge by the right side of the Woodham offensive line. Tate followed him right in there off tackle. Defense came in, swarmed around him, and then he bounced off outside into the end zone. That makes it 28-14, and the Titans once again will go for two. This would pull them within 12 points. I'm not sure what the 12, what the advantage of 12 to 13 is, but maybe it's psychological as much as anything. They give it to the fullback, and he won't get there this time. So the Titans with 14. 
I thought when the Titans went for two the first time they, they scored, they'd gone ahead and put it on an odd number and they would be able to kick the extra point three times and uh, take a 29 to 28 lead if they could get back in the game that way. And I thought they'd kick it there, but they went for two again. And it's 28 to 14. We'll be back in a minute. Terry's Seafood House, Pensacola's landmark for seafood. Treat yourself to a delicious seafood dinner or lunch in the historic pre-Civil War Toll Keepers home. Choose from mouth-watering specials such as baked or raw oysters, fried soft-shell crab, and Alaskan king crab legs. Stop by for cocktails and snacks in the gazebo. You'll enjoy congenial company and big screen entertainment. Terry's Seafood House and Gazebo, a bit of the Old South, at Barrancas and Pace Boulevard. All right. Kick comes down to Schamberger at a 10-yard line. He gets out to about the 25. Well, let's see if uh, Manatee's offense comes out uh, running the football, which is what they've been really successful with in their first half, or if they come out greedy again like they did the first drive of the, of the second half. This game had apparently been well in hand. But the Titans came out, and of course, we've mentioned before, this Titan team has come from behind. They've never come from 28 points down. 6.39 to go, third quarter. Manatee, the offense. The pitch it outside to Gaskin. Gaskin, he's gone. Bradley's the only one who can catch him, and he drags him down at the 15-yard line. The Woodham defensive line strung that play out that time. They took the ball away from the fullback, made the quarterback pitch on the corner. Gaskins took the pitch and then made one tremendous cut back inside. Here's a replay. 57 yards on the play. Right there's a cut that he comes back inside on the corner and then puts a move on the safety. I'm not sure if Blankenship 32 was out of position or not, but he was a man who was making a little bit of pursuit at the line. And once he got by him, it was no problem putting the move on Adams. You don't lot stop Gaskin one-on-one. -on -one. First down from the 17, and they give it to Gaskin again, and he trips in the backfield, and it's quite possible that 63, Edward Williams, got a hand on him. Couple-yard loss to the 19-yard line. John Keziah made the tackle. 86, Keziah also there. Second and 12. That just goes to show you the never-say-die attitude this defense plays with. Bill Bradley made a tremendous effort to catch him from behind. And we'll see if it pays off here for Woodham. Second down at 12. Quarterback keeps, and the short gain to about the original line of scrimmage. He's about to maybe the 15-yard line. So it'll be a third down and about eight, and another big play for Manatee. Defensively for Woodham, I think that's what they've got to do on the option series. They've got to take the pitch man, they've got to take the fullback, and... The least guy that can hurt you in that triple option series is a quarterback. Third down and eight. Gaskin is on the left wing. The tight end is also over there. And now they bring the wide receiver. Now they, they're all sorts of motion. Quarterback still has it. For the tight end. He makes the catch. That looks like a touchdown. I don't know. They're going to spot it on the one. Great catch by the tight end. We'll take another look at it. They're not going to give him the touchdown. Walker made the play. Again, this is a misdirect, uh, misdirection fake to the tailback to the right side. And then they come up and look for the tight end across the middle. And he went up and made a great play, did Walker. The tight end is a secondary receiver on that particular play. They're trying to get the fullback in the flat, and they're looking for him first. If he's not open, then the tight end should be open coming in behind the linebackers. Manatee from the half-yard line. Quarterback keeps. Touchdown. When you have a balanced attack, as Manatee is showing here, with uh, running the football successfully, being able to come up with big pass plays when necessary, it's very, very difficult to defend. I don't envy uh, Coach Thorson and his defensive staff's position right now. The big run, 57 yards by Gaskin, put Manatee in business at the Woodham 17. Took him four plays to score after that. Elton tacks on the extra point. 
And it is now 35 to 14. 4.23 to go in the third quarter. the premier golf front condominium plan for Pensacola Beach. I'm Buzz Ritchie, president of Southern Home Savings Bank, proudly announcing our participation with pilot properties in the most luxurious residential homes ever on Santa Rosa Island. Visit our furnished model today and sample the best of golf living, Coral Rose, rising 15 stories above the white sands and including 55 luxury homes and unmatched amenities. Visit the Coral Rose today and become a part of this exciting residential opportunity. The Woodham surge, the Titans coming out, scoring the first two times. They have the football in the third quarter, but Manatee marching 76 or 74 yards, and it's now 35-14. Salisbury at the nine. Trying to get outside now, but he's not going to be able to do it. He'll wrap him up and drag him out of bounds across the way. There you see Samuels again, even on the kickoff coverage, making the big plays. Salisbury is still down. For the now he's getting up. I think he just had his bell rung because he was flung to the turf awfully hard. Now Salisbury makes his way across the field. He may have landed on that ball, Dan, and knocked the breath out of him over there on the sidelines. Reef Snyder is in the game at quarterback. 4.17 to go. Titans have to score, I guess, every time they have the football. Fullback straight ahead, not much there. That was a definite give handoff. There was no read involved with that with the quarterback. There. We notice Vince Dickens coming back into the game now, quarterback. Fullback was going to get the ball no matter what. Gain of two on the play, second down and eight, and Dickens back in. Hawkins in motion. Dickens back to throw. And he's got his man Hackett. Nice catch, and he is belted by Darren Robinson, but Hackett made the catch short of the first down, I believe. He is within a couple inches. What we see here is a fake to the fullback and then bring the tight end out on a, on a quick corner route here. Gets in behind the secondary, but the free safety comes all the way from the backside and makes a tremendous play. And Robert Hackett made a great catch there. And it's close enough to measure Hackett deceptively quick I guess he's not a speed merchant only runs about a 48 49 40 but he has great hands best hands really of any of the receivers on the football team and he showed the great hands making that play third down and just that much it's short by about two and a half inches stadium announcer here said short by two and a half inches it's getting a little specific that's Sunday night at 8 o'clock on Group W Cable Channel 25. The replay of tonight's ball. 3.42 to go in the third quarter. Sparks and Faro lined up on the left side. That's the strong side here. Pickering and Palchek are the linemen on the right side. So let's we'll see if they run it to the left side behind Rick Faro at... Vince Sparks, 75 and, or 77 and 75. That's also running away from Jason Potter if they do. And you give it to Jones. Jones, first down again, and he's out across the 35 to the 36. So the Titan drive remains alive. 3.27 to go, stopping the clock momentarily to move the chains. And Woodham Coach is signaling the plays in quickly. Sasser is out there alone on Larry Taylor now. On the left side, split left. But they're going to run away from that. Dickens hit in the backfield and dropped. Big play by Chris Betts, number 66. On the replay there, you saw uh, Dickens coming down the line on the outside veer, making the read to the fullback. 
and uh, they filled the inside with a fullback with a middle linebacker, and then they took the quarterback with a defensive end. They both they had both options covered that time. Second down at about 12. Salisbury in motion. Little misdirection in the backfield, and Hawkins is hit by that middle linebacker, Chuck Howard. 210-pound senior makes the play. That was a misdirection play again, which are trying to get uh, the defense to read going to the wide side of the field. The middle linebacker didn't take the bite at all. He sat right there, held his ground, and made the play. Third down and 10 as he got back to the original line of scrimmage, and the Titans take timeout. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching the state championship game on WEAR. Sue, it's that time of year again, a special time during the holiday season to think about other people and the human relations. And that's right, and that's what we're going to talk about. And it's no more a matter of black and white. We're talking now about age, sex, marital status, even military status, and Eugene Brown from the Human Relations Commission will be here to tell us all about your rights. So join us this Sunday for Sunday Extra at 5. It's the biggest star-studded holiday event of the year, the 1985 Hollywood Christmas Parade. It's the most exciting ever, with bands, floats, and the biggest lineup of your favorite stars, including this year's Grand Marshal, William Shatner. A celebration for the whole family, including a visit from Santa Claus. Ring in the holiday season with the 1985 Hollywood Christmas Parade. Sunday at 3 on WEAR 3. Third down and 10. The Titans trying to keep this drive alive at their own 36. Hawkins in motion. Reese Snyder. That's a foe. That's a that lateral. lateral. The ball still alive. And Sasser wisely picks it up and gets out of bounds. But they're going to lose about five or six yards on the play. And whereas the Titans will be willing to gamble on some fourth down situations, fourth and 16 is not one of them. I'm not sure if the ball was hit or he, I, he just got hit as he tried to unload it. Yeah, Reese Snyder got hit from behind as he tried to throw the ball, which uh, knocked it into the backfield. I believe Sasser was going to try to throw the ball after receiving it because that was going to be a lateral anyway. But the, I think so. They looked like they were trying to set up the double pass that time, which again, like you said, on third down and 10, I'm not sure that's a... Hackett gets off a nice punt to Gaskin at the 30. Gaskin is met but breaks the tackle. Benelli hit him at the 45 and he stayed on his feet and he took a pretty good pop. This little guy will not give up. I tell you what, he has really got some feet. Very quick. Balance. We'll take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm Dionne Warwick and this is the new look of solid gold. The music you can always count on kicks off with my special co-host and friend, Johnny Knight. Also on stage, Tears for Fears, a classic performance from Grammy winner Tina Turner, plus actor, singer, and world-class star, Sting. Join us this week for the new Solid Gold. On WEAR3. All right, we just, uh, first down play, Manatee moving from the 48-yard line to the Woodham 46, a pickup of six, and it's a second down and four. 1.15 to go third quarter. And it's like sudden death for the Titan offense and defense. The defense has to stop Manatee every time they have the football, and the offense has to score, and that's a tall order tonight. They give the ball once again to Al Clark, the fullback, and he gets close to a first down. It's going to be important at this time for Manatee to be able to grind the clock out and just run the football, use up the clock as much as possible, get as many first downs as possible. And on the other hand, Woodham has got to get the ball back. They're going to have to start pressuring this offense somehow, coming with some blitzes or something, trying to create some turnovers. Third down and about two. Big defensive play for the Titans. Clark hurdles the line and gets the first down. Eddie Boyd hanging on along with Edward Williams. The Clark gets the first down at the just outside the 40-yard line. The right 
defensive side of that Woodham defense that time did a pretty good job of stalemating their blockers, but uh, the fullback just hurtled in between the two blocks and jumped over them, actually. He was the running back. The Titan coaches felt was the real threat, although both of them are, are an exceptional running backs, but the fullback was the one they are probably most concerned about. Gaskin, who makes him think every time he gets the football, short gain this time. Williams penetrated 63 and maybe may have made him turn it outside a little bit. And that's the end of the third quarter. Manatee leading Woodham 35 to 14. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in just a minute. on the best of three Sunday night movie, Judy Garland stars in Meet Me in St. Louis. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis, meet me at the fair. Don't tell me the lights are shining any place but there. We will dance the hoochie coochie. All right, we missed a play while we were away. Second down, Carl May kept the ball, carried to the Woodham 34-yard line, so it's another big third down play. Third and a long three. They have to get uh, to about the 30-and-a-half yard line, just inside the 31. So, with that of the eye, Gaskin and Clark, the running backs, tight end on the left side. And they give it straight ahead to Clark. Clark stood up short of the first down and driven back. Mike O'Daniel, number 11, is the man who hit him. And then Bill Bradley came on to help out. And again, that is not Don Sharp. That's Mike Thorson, defensive coach for the Woodham Titans. It's fourth down and about one. Maybe he got a field promotion. <laughs> That's Mike Thorson signaling the plays in, and Manatee is going to take a timeout. So with fourth down and one, their offensive team still on the field, and Manatee takes a timeout. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, honey. What do you want Santa Claus to bring you? All I want for Christmas is a Superior water beer from Superior Sleep Shop. They have the number one selling water beers in America, all specially priced for Christmas. Do you think you'd have room on this sleigh for a matching dresser and mirror? Have you been a good girl? It's beautiful. Thanks, Santa. Superior Sleep Shop, Mariner Mall, Pensacola, and Field Parkway, Fort Walton Beach. Clark gets the first down. That was uh, a probably a last gasp defensive effort for the Titans. They had to stop him here. Now 10.52 to go. In the football game, 35 to 14. It'll be very difficult for the Woodham offense to come back with this deficit here with just 10 minutes to go in the game. There they have Don Sharp. What a record he's had here at Woodham. Coach Sharp does a tremendous job in the overall organization of this program. Trying to get outside this time. His gas can driven out of bounds. He goes out of bounds at about the 27-yard line, so it's no gain. Second down and 10. No gain on the play. Does the word irrepressible come to mind right now? Second down and 10 for Manatee. The Titan defense trying to dig in and deny Manatee any more points. 21-point difference in this game right now. And with 10-24 to go. May outside keeps after faking the pitch. Loose football. Tony Thompson has it, I believe. Tony Thompson, number 31, is the man who recovered. So the first turnover of the night 
Bay, and the ball was knocked loose by Bill Bradley. Bradley, the man who's come up with so many big defensive plays in these playoffs, had an interception for a touchdown a couple weeks ago, picked off the first pass that set up a touchdown last week, and he forced the fumble right there. So the Titans take over first down on the 20. Fullback stood up. You can hear that one up here. I don't know. I just can't uh, quite agree with the fullback up the middle when you're behind by 21 with nine minutes to go. They're going to have to open up. Brought to you by the man who installed the run and shoot offensive tape. But it is uh, time is of the essence. 940 to go. Re uh, Dickens is the quarterback. Sasser's out here one on one on Taylor. And Dickens gives a misdirection again to Hawkins, and that's not there. Hawkins is hit first by Jason Potter. Potter, number 65. With up of a couple of yards, third down and eight. At about the 23. Manatee's secondary plays man-to-man -man coverage about 90% of the time, and they're out here with a one-on-one -on -one situation. I think they're going to have to Try to come out here and attack number 12, Larry Taylor. Taylor's out here on Sasser. Reed Snyder in the game at quarterback, so it's really not much mystery. On third down at about six and a half. They're swinging it out here to Hawkins. No, that's Sasser, and he's going to throw deep. He's got Salisbury. Salisbury breaks it at the 30. They won't. play <laughs> 76 yards Sasser to Salisbury here's your instant replay that play was executed about as well as it could possibly be it was thrown out there on the pass to uh, the quick screen to Sasser and then he comes up and throws a double pass to Salisbury who makes an excellent catch and a great cut back there to avoid both defenders and makes it run back to the back right corner of the end zone. 35 to 20 and Fritz is on to attempt the extra point. See it's a fake. Rafe Snyder still has it. Rafe Snyder. He gets in. Again, Coach Sharp is pulling out of his uh, bag of tricks right there, coming up with some big plays. Still making a good game out of this thing with eight minutes to go. We could look for an onside kick here, possibly. The thing that's amazing about these plays, and we'll take a break and be back in a minute. to go in the football game and another onside kick and this time it's going to be recovered by Manatee so at the 47 yard line and the man who got there to get his hands on the football was John Kenzior a backup tight end and Kenzior recovers at the Manatee 47 yard line what is Coach Joe Canan Woodham's going to have to come after him defensively, try to create a turnover in the backfield, make something happen so they can get the ball back with eight minutes and 21 seconds left. They can't allow this Manatee team to get a drive going. Two wide receivers to the right side. That's Waiters and Mays. Look for your misdirection to the tight end. Straight ahead to the fullback, and Clark breaking tackles, and Clark gets the first down. or very close to it. These two running backs for Manatee run with balance like you can't believe. They just get hit and they spin off. They go down to the ground, put their hand on the ground, come up running. It's just a tremendous second and third effort. 
You know, you grab for him after hitting him, and it's a lot like Oakland. There is no there there. He got the first down at the Woodham 42-yard line, and Manatee's concerned with a couple of things. Yeah, they'd like to score, but really, they just like to run some time off the clock. And the officials will take a timeout. An equipment problem. This will only take a second. As uh, on that last run, the fullback Clark threw a shoe. When they run that fullback trap off the freeze option, they just leave the tail back there. He doesn't go anywhere. He just stands there and he freezes. And the whole secondary and the linebackers freeze for Woodham. And they have no keys. And then all of a sudden, the linemen are on them and they're making their blocks before they can react. Again, they give it to the fullback Clark. And he hits Brewer at about the 39-yard line and runs over him. But Brewer hung on to make the stop and picks, him up, picks himself up slowly. Pick up on a play of four. It'll be a second down and six. And the clock continues to run 7.15 to go in the fourth quarter. 35 to 22. Manatee leads Woodham. Second and six. Clark hurdles, and this time they'll stack him up and stop him for a short gain. Loose football, but the play had been blown dead. They stop him at about the 35-yard line. Bradley made the tackle. You see uh, Woodham defenders, they're going for the football. They've got to tackle the football at this point in the game. Try to get it back for the offense. And, of course, when you do that, a lot of times you miss the tackle and they pop the big one on you. Third down and about three yards to go. And we'll wait for this play, and then I'll pose a question to you and see if you think there's any merit to it. Third down and about three. Quarterback still has it. He turns it up, and he's hit short of the first down. He gets about a yard. He'll be two and a half yards short. And now decision time for Joe Canan. You go ahead and go for it on fourth down. Well, they, he got a generous spot. It's going to be a fourth down and about a yard now. They, they, they gave him every bit of that. Fourth down and about a yard and a half. The Titans hadn't turned the ball over often coming into this game. Manatee had. They only have one turnover tonight. And the Titans take a timeout. We'll let you think about this. Do you think that maybe the fact that they're having so much success inside and they don't have to run the high-risk offense, maybe that's helped Manatee keep the turnovers down? We'll be back in a minute. Everybody, I'm Joan London. And I'm Ben Vereen. And we're on our way to the happiest show of all. Walt Disney World's Very Merry Christmas Parade on Christmas morning on ABC. It's 90 minutes of fantasy in an all-time favorite Christmas tradition, live from the Magic Kingdom in Florida. Join us for Walt Disney World's Very Merry Christmas Parade, live Christmas morning here on WEAR3 on the Gulf Coast. you love it! We're back. Fourth down and a yard to go. Manatee going for it from the Woodham 33-yard line. Clark stacked up at the line. He fell forward for the first down. He got that all on his own. Edward Williams hit him at the line of scrimmage, short of the first down, and he drove for the yardage. Again, and you see that leg drive, that balance. They're going to bring the chains in, but I think he's got it by more than the length of the football from the way things look here. 6-10 to go in the football game. Uh, getting back to the, the point just before we took that last break. And there you see, he has a first down easily. Manatee has moved the ball so effectively inside, they haven't done that much pitching outside to Gaskin. Do you feel that's been a factor in keeping the turnovers down? I definitely think so. Anytime that uh, huge offensive line can come off the ball and control the, the defensive front, up front, then why not give it to the fullback? You know, as long as they're doing that, uh, they don't have the turnovers, and that's a big part of the game right now. There is no turnovers on Manatee's side. Just that one that stopped their last drive, and that's below their average. And Gaskin trying to get outside this time, and a flag goes down behind the play, and it's been a remarkably penalty-free game. And we'll just have to check and see what this is all about. The Titans are pointing backwards, so it's a hold uh, against Manatee. So that uh, mark it back 10 yards. Well, that's one of the reasons, Dan, that these two teams are here in the state finals is because they don't make too many mistakes and uh, it should be a, uh, basically a penalty-free game. 
They mark off the 10 yards from the spot of the hold, and that brings it back to the 40-yard line. And it will set up a first down and about 19 yards to go. 5.50 to go. And the clock is now running. First down just inside the 40. 5.39 to go, and of course, every second is hurting the Titans now, and this time the quarterback keeps it wrapped up and dropped and for one of the few times tonight. A little penetration by the Woodham defense, and I believe it was 54, Keith Smith. 54, Smith makes the play. Both linebackers were on the blitz that time. That's what they're going to have to do is try to get in the backfield and create some turnovers. Smith, uh, as many of you know, has been slowed by a knee injury the last few weeks. In fact, he was a little bit slow last week, and Max Sturdivant, his coach, said that's about the only time he can remember yelling at him was he was a little slow in last week's game. He's just a consistent football player. Quarterback keeps again. This time he's got some room to run, and Adams lowers the boom after Bradley had made the tackle. But May gets down to the 36-yard line, and it will set up a third down and long. Third down and about 15 yards to go. And, of course, keeping the ball on the ground. The clock continues to run. 4.37 to go now. Remember, the Titans scored to make it 35-22 with eight and a half minutes to go. So, Manatee has successfully run off four minutes of the clock, controlling the line of scrimmage. Third down and five. Quarterback Capes, fullback. he's flooding the zone. He's got the fullback first. Short of the first down, he's dragged down. Well, again, we'll have to watch the spot. Again, it looked pretty generous. And they gave him the first down. Let's take a look at where he goes out. Knees down right there, and I believe he was down short of the first down. And the officiating crew gave him the first down. From that instant replay, Dan, it looked like his knee was down about a, a yard, yard and a half before he ever got to the first down marker. Well, it is pretty natural for an official when there's that much momentum forward to mark it a little bit more forward. That happens all the time, and it was close enough. But it's a big play on third down and long, and they pick it up, and that may seal it. 4-11 to go. Gaskin. Gaskin. It's near the 10-yard line. That was a nice cutback by Gaskins that time. They started on the blast play over the right side. He sees a hole on the backside, cuts back behind the center's block in the backside guard and picks up good yardage. You know, they run, they run the fullback at you, and they run the fullback at you, and they pound away, and then they throw a little wrinkle like that at you, and you just it, you, you get up you get up a little bit slower off the turf after something like that. Ball resting just outside the 10-yard line, so they could pick up a first down. First down at 10. And the clock continues to run. Gaskin. Gaskin. And he drives Drive. to the two-yard line. Two Same With exact Shannon play, Dan. Hanging on. Same play they just came with on the last time when they come with a blast play to the strong side. Tailback Gaskin saw the hole. Cut back. Good yardage. And now you can see Manatee. Remember how long they've waited for this football game. They feel they should have gotten a shot at Woodham last year when Manatee was number one, upset by Lakeland in the playoffs. And Woodham beat Lakeland the next week and won the state championship the week after that. And Manatee's been waiting since then for this night. And Clark goes in for the touchdown. I tell you, the physical nature of this game here, it's just got to be wearing down on the Woodham defense. You know, they just can only stand in there so long. They're so overmatched. I think it's uh, 32 pounds per man difference on the front seven people up front. And it certainly has told tonight. You have guys up there on the offensive line. Macy Mitchell is the big one at left guard. He's got the perfect name, Macy, because he could be a float in the parade. And they've really been blowing the holes. And then you have the Stickler brothers on the right side. And Manatee going for two. 41 to 22. They have a 19-point lead going for two. They pitch it outside to Gaskin. And he's going to get in. 
ought to cut back. The defenders were there. There was two defenders for Woodham there on the play, on the pitch, and uh, he just made a tremendous catch, first of all, and the pitch was a little bit behind him, and then he just took it and cut back. He plants sharply right here and cuts behind. Cuts behind John uh, Kasaya. And Abrams gets the lick on him in the end zone. When you're hot, you're hot, I guess. 2.59 to go in the football game, and Manatee is that far away from a state championship. We'll be back. Deep. They didn't even have it teed up, and Vincent Tate picking it up, number 30, bringing it out to the 35-yard line, but what happens from here on out is window dressing because there's silence on the Woodham side of the field, and they're partying in Bradenton. 43 to 22 with 2.56 to go. Reef Snyder in the game. Salisbury left, Sasser right. Reed Snyder out here to Salisbury. Salisbury puts the move on Taylor and then is run out of bounds. Reed Snyder taken out of bounds by Larry Taylor. All we see here is um, Dudman going in motion, turning up the field, and we get the simple out route or the hitch route here to number 20 Salisbury. Catches it, gets up the field, and gets out of bounds, stop the clock. Did a nice job of getting out of bounds because he actually was inside the defensive back. First down from the Manatee 47-yard line. Reef Snyder, play action's not going to fool anybody. All kinds of time he's going for. Ooh, a little contact. Sasser, the intended receiver, and Farron Horns had him covered. Farron Horns, defending. It's second and ten. Good pass protection by the offensive line that time to give Reeve Snyder the time to find the, the receiver deep downfield. There was a little bit of contact, but it looked on the replay like incidental bumping, as you can see. Both players were in pretty good position, and it was a good no call. Second down from the 47, second and 10. Reeve Snyder to Sasser, who makes the catch and is drilled immediately by Horns. Short of the first down, so the clock will continue to run with 2.24 to go. Line up on the line of scrimmage. Need to have two plays called or have uh, automatics in their two-minute offense. Third down, and they get it out here to Salisbury, oh, intercepted! No. Taylor's got it! Hawkins is the only man who can catch him, and he won't do it. Touchdown, Manatee. And it's a little icing on the cake. Okay, we see the same hitch route that he's trying to throw out here. Got a little bit too high there for Salisbury to handle. Came off his hands on the deflection. A 65-yard interception return. They gave Taylor 65 yards on the interception return, and with 1.56 to go, that, must, that might be fitting. And now on to attempt the extra point, and this could be the 50th point of the night. Elton. Andy Elton. And it's good, and now I can, it almost makes sense now that uh, Canaan, when he went for two before the touchdown before, now it enabled him to get the 50 here. 
Now you can enjoy drive-up banking around the clock. I'm Buzz Ritchie, president of Southern Home Savings Bank, introducing you to Southern Access, our new 24-hour automatic banker. Southern Access is fast, simple to use, and allows you to withdraw cash or make deposits from the safety of your car. It's always open and a part of the Honor Network with thousands of locations in Florida. The convenience of 24-hour drive-up banking is available now at Southern Home. Apply at any one of our locations for your Southern Access card today. Final two minutes and the ball is recovered by Manatee, the Titans. Well, when the wheels come off, they come off. And now we'll find, find out if Joe Canan is indeed running the score up. Ball's at the Woodham 35. And I tell you, you talk about stories of the game, this is it. That is the fourth turnover for the Titans. And that has been one of the big differences in the game, but I don't think that's been really the determining factor. Here's the interception at the 35 at Taylor. He got a big block from 51, Zach Samuel, and why not? He's done everything else tonight. First down from the 35-yard line. Fullback straight ahead, Clark. A minute and a half to go, and the streamers continue to fly out on the field. And they'll stop the clock as they take the streamers off the field, and now start the clock once again. A minute 19 to go. 50 to 22. It's been all manatee. 28 to nothing at the half. The Titans came out and scored two quick touchdowns in the third quarter. Made it 28 to 14. But Manatee came right back with a long drive and has controlled things since then. And that's Schamberger, number 31, Pete Schamberger in the game. He's a 5'9", 180 pound junior. And so the final minute of the high school careers for a number of Titan seniors, and they have a lot of them. Keziah, Boyd, DuBose, Williams, O'Daniel, Brewer, Smith, Bonelli, Bradley, everywhere you look on the defense. Blankenship and Shannon Adams, the two safeties who held the team meeting before the playoffs and got this team on track. Playing their final minute, 36 seconds to go straight ahead and the hit made by Larry Brewer and the team's leading tackler in 1985 may have made his final tackle of his career. So the Titans will finish at 11 and three. Manatee, 12 and two, and they got that state championship. It's their second in three years, and I suspect this is probably their sweetest. Eight, seven seconds, they're counting it down, and Manatee, which won a state championship in 1908, now wins one in 1985. Final score, 50 to 22. I'm Dionne Warwick, and this is the new look of Solid Gold. The music you can always count on kicks off with my special co-host and friend, Johnny Mathis. Also on stage, Tears for Fears, a classic performance from Grammy winner Tina Turner, plus actor, singer, and world-class star, Sting. Join us this week for the new Solid Gold. On WEAR3. Dan Shugart once again from Hawkins Stadium at Manatee High School with Don Sharp. Coach, twice you've been on the other side of this at Woodham, and uh, now you get the uh, bitter, bitter taste. It's bitter, but it's not as bitter as it would have been had we not come back in the second half and showed a little pride and determination. At the halftime, we went in and said, they're blowing us out. We've got to gain some pride and, and uh, some self-respect. And we came back out and we did some good things, but still, we didn't do the things that we'd, we'd planned to do. They jumped out on us there at the beginning. Really, they stopped us enough on offense to get the ball back, I think, three times right there the first half. And we really found ourselves in a situation we very seldom find ourselves in, especially against a state championship caliber football team. This was a great team. I certainly hope this can be a one. <laughs> Did they? Well, they're coming up right after this. Did uh, Manatee do anything that surprised you, either offensively or defensively? They were physically stronger offensively than I even suspected. We knew that they were going to be a great football team offensively, but 
we didn't have any any idea that they were going to be that much superior physically to our the size of our kids and the strength of our kids. And their running backs were tremendous. I mean, you could see that all night that we just bounced off. Not because our kids had given up. I don't think there's a man on this field that gave up, including me or anybody else. We were still trying to do something for our county, our school, and our city. At the end of that ball game, the odds weren't very good. Well, you did show a great deal of class coming back in the second half. Did you feel when you made it 28 to 14 that uh, what was the thought on the sideline at that point? We knew that we had to stop them, and that was, it wasn't luck that stopped them, but we had to come up with a big play on defense, and they're, they're a superior defense, I mean, superior offensive team. Well coached, well disciplined, everything they did was very disciplined. And uh, they did some things that with their shifts that gave us some problems that we didn't expect. I thought that was a great coaching job. And our defensive people came back the second half and adjusted to it pretty well. The problem was we couldn't break their, bring their running backs down there the second half a couple of times. We had them fourth and, a, and I guess a yard down there one time, hit the guy in the backfield. Two people hit him and drug us for a one foot first down. And that wasn't the difference in the ball game. But what our intention was, all along was to play the best game we were capable of playing. We're disappointed in the score. We're disappointed in the fact that we couldn't win this ball game, but we didn't get beat. I mean, we didn't, we're never beaten as long as our kids work as hard as they can work and do the best they can do and not a kid quit, so we didn't get beat. We got out scored. Coach, congratulations on a great season, and uh, we'll look for you to come back for another one next year. We'd love to. All right, good luck to you. See you, Dan. Take care, Coach. Coach Don Sharp of the Woodham Titans picking up his 11th career loss at Woodham in his uh, six years there. So the Titans end up 11-3. Manatee goes away state champions. We'll be back. He's having problems in school. He fights with his family. He hangs out with a different crowd. He lies. He's destructive. He's erratic. People think he's a problem kid. Unfortunately, he's an addict. Help him get a clean start. Call 800-COCAINE, the hotline that's answered over one and a quarter million calls since 1983. Well, the celebration goes on. A Manatee fans celebrating their second state championship in three years. and. Jim, you know how tough it is for a high school senior to, uh, whose career to end in a disappointing way like this? Uh, you're, the seniors you had at Tate ended in a, in a great disappointment, a close game where you, you, every little thing that might have turned the game around gnaws at you. This game, the Titans, as Michael O'Leary, the secondary coach, said before the game, if we lose tonight, we will have been beaten by a better football team, and that was the case tonight. Yes, it certainly was, Dan. I think it's going to be a long bus ride back for these guys, and the coaches and the players will all run this thing over and over in their mind a thousand times on the way back to Pensacola tomorrow. And uh, I don't know, they surely don't have anything to be ashamed of. They had a tremendous football season. Well, you know, we've been so easy to quit at 28 to nothing at halftime that they came out uh, with the onside kick to open up the second half. They recovered that, went in for that touchdown. Uh, st the defense stiffened and, and got the ball back for the offense. They closed within 28 to 14, but really the big play in the second half at that point was Gaskin's 57-yard run, which put Manatee down in the uh, Woodham 16-yard line. They took that in for a touchdown, and it uh, really kind of took all the wind out of the sails from that point. I tell you, it's really tough trying to defend this uh, Manatee offense. They're so explosive and so wide open. They've got the, the tremendous offensive line to open the inside holes where your fullback. They get outside with Gaskins to make the tremendous long runs. They, they come to the passing to their fullback out of the backfield. They hit their tight end across the middle, and they're just very wide open and explosive. And they exploded tonight, and the one thing they did not do tonight was turn the football over. One fumble, and uh, at the time it looked like it might be a factor in the football game, uh, but really the one, football, uh, the one fumble and the Titans turned it over four times, and that was the difference. It was very unlikely of uh, Woodham's offense to have those many, that many turnovers. Of course, it wasn't all with their offense, but uh, they usually play uh, error-free ball, and uh, tonight they made a couple of mistakes, and they ended up being big turnovers, but... Uh, this defense really surprised me of Manatee. I didn't think uh, their defense was going to be as quick as they were, and they just really got around the football. They played a great football game, Jim. It's been a pleasure working with you tonight. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Well, thank you, Dan. It's been a pleasure being here. All right. That will more than do it for tonight from Hawkins Stadium in Bradenton, Florida, where tonight the 
Bradenton Manatee Hurricanes have clinched the state championship for Class 5A. 50 to 22 was the final score. I'm Dan Shugart inviting you to stay tuned for the Class 4A state championship game. Escambia and Bradenton Southeast coming right up on three.